I request uh, Mr. Prasun Singh. He'll be presenting to us on uh, hydrological disaster risk reduction, preparedness and response. So I'll also introduce uh, Mr. Prasun Singh. Mm. Mr. Singh is a fellow and the area convener at the Center for Global Res Environment Research at Theory. He has over eight years of work experience and uh, he works on water resource management, climate change, hydrological and hydrodynamical modeling, impact assessment, training and project management. He has been engaged as a senior consultant with uh, NDMA, National Disaster Management Authority, Government of India. He also looks after uh, flood and river erosion management uh, for NDMA at national level. Uh, we request you, sir, to make your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here, and uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, DST and uh, Pondicherry uh, Climate Change Cell for having me here and giving this opportunity to have a discussion with you all. So a uh, lot of things has been already been shared with you regarding climate change impact, how it is going to impact our uh, demands and how it is going to impact our lives and, and uh, energy demand, waste management, climate, climate change has multiple dimensions, uh, the way it is going to impact our lives. So I would be very brief uh, for the interest of the time and we'll look at the how this is translated into the disasters and what kind of disaster we have in our country, uh, what are the strategies so far we have taken, uh, what are the uh, mechanism we ha all have at national and center level, and also looking into the some example, what we have seen, there are so many presentation has been done on early warning system development, information sharing, and how they are uh, enhancing our response. So uh, just going to the, de uh, the start with the disasters, how we define it. So there are so many definitions, but uh, the definition what uh, at, uh, which, which was defined by the central authority, which is National Disaster Management uh, uh, Authority uh, under uh, Disaster Management Act 2005. And it says that a catastrophe, a, mis a mishap, a calamity or grave occurrence in any area arising from natural or man-made causes or by accident or negligence, which results in substantial loss of life or human suffering or damage to, and destruction of property or damage to, or degradation of environment, and is of such a nature or magnitude as to be beyond the coping capacity of the community of the affected area. This is the legal language, I just put it simply. What disaster means? Disaster occurs when a community's risk mitigation measures fails. When we are not able to cope with the changing hazards and it's, it is so uh, uh, overwhelming that we are not able to respond properly, then disaster happens. And as a consequence, disasters are, these are the consequences of inappropriately managed risk, if I put it in other way. There are serious disruptions happen because of the disasters, uh, because it happens in very short period of time, very small period of time. So we don't have much time to respond. So uh, uh, these are the consequences and resulted, resulted in loss of lives, uh, loss of economy and environmental degradations. So uh, how we define disaster, how many disaster we, uh, do we have in our country, uh, the, Nodal Agency is Ministry of Home Affairs. It classifies and notifies disasters based on its severity and the scale of uh, the impact. And uh, if we look at the total number of disasters uh, in, in uh, uh, group wise, uh, we can classify the disasters in five categories, which is biological, climatological, geophysical, hydrological and meteorological. So and if we look at the numbers, we can clearly say that most of the disasters are happening uh, is, are in the category of hydrological and meteorological disasters. Uh, in that also, we have uh, floods in high number, highest number of disasters, uh, what we are facing globally and as or in Indian context, flood is the most 
occurring most devastating disasters we are facing floods and droughts these two disasters meteorological disasters where there so much efforts have been done at every level we but we are not able to reduce the risk and we are not able to reduce the loss of lives and economy if you look at the continent wise uh, total number of natural disasters asian countries are most vulnerable in terms of number of disaster hitting in those areas and these are the least developed and underdeveloped countries so if you if you summarize this 90% of the event 70% of casualties and 70% uh, of economic lo losses are related to hydrometeorological disasters alone so as we, i was saying how we can define these disasters and because based on the notified disaster the resources are going to be allocated by the ministry by the state and the nodal agencies so government of india has uh, notified 13 disasters at uh, at national level uh, which are classified as hydrometeorological disaster geological disaster and accidental disaster which we can classify in others category uh, which includes floods droughts cold wave cyclone hailstorms cloud burst this comes under the hydrometeorological disasters geological disasters include earthquake tsunami landslides avalanches uh, others are pest attack which are also considered in the biological disaster fire and recent edition is covid-19 because it has a these are these classifications are based on the impact and severity so these are the 13 no notified disaster where there are plannings and national level policies has been uh, made and also the resource allocations uh, were made for these uh, to tackle with these disasters other than that there are state specific disasters and in, in uh, disaster management act there is a provision uh, that state can notify uh, the state specific disasters if you were uh, talk about pondicherry pondicherry has been classified as multi disaster prone state uh, uh, and it has basically cyclone uh, flood urban flooding issue and coastal uh, erosion so that these disaster can be notified by pondicherry government and then uh, resource allocation can be take place uh, the um, other disasters which we can say that uh, just to um, inform that the coastal and river erosion disaster it has been notified uh, by uh, assam government also and it is in the discussion at center that we should notify coastal and river erosion as a uh, national disaster because of because this is a silent disaster category every year people and farmers are losing lands and there if this is not notified there won't be any compensation mechanism so there is a proposal at uh, center ministry that we should consider coastal and river erosion as a notified disaster and uh, i got an opportunity to work with drafting the national policy on re re rehabilitation of uh, uh, people who are getting affected due to coastal and river erosion the policy is under development it will be released soon i hope by end of this year the uh, national policy will be made so uh, i would be uh, i personally is a hydrologist by uh, training i work on the area of flood management uh, we design interventions like early warning systems uh, flood mitigation measures uh, provide training and capacity modeling so sort or sort of ex exercise so if we look at the flood flood can also further divide into four categories urban floods which is a uh, it's a recent disaster which uh, is affecting human lives in large scale uh, with the increase in urbanization this kind uh, urban flooding has become a major issue uh, at uh, we have classified 21 districts so far which are facing the urban flood issues on regular basis uh, and it has a huge consequences uh, on human uh, uh, human uh, on human life as well as on, uh, they have the consequences of economic losses most of the business development happens in in these uh, urban centers storm surge due to uh, cyclonic activities flash floods can be classified the floods which happens in a uh, very short period of time you get the peak flow within hours within uh, half an hour or 5 hours times so these are very short duration flooding happens but the impacts are very huge 
Then there is a riverine floods, which uh, is going on for centuries. So if you look at the uh, distribution of flooding, which uh, uh, state is most prone to floods, we can classify northern states, especially, and northeastern states, which, were, which are most prone to flood, including Assam, Bihar, Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra, uh, Odisha, West Bengal, and traditionally now because of the climate change and increasing rainfall, uh, the states which were not traditionally facing the issue of riverine floods have started facing the issue of floods on regular intervals. So this is a concern for everyone. Climatology, if you look at, uh, my colleague Saurav has already presented yesterday how the climate change is going to impact uh, our uh, hydrology in terms of uh, precipitation changes. So how the precipitation changes is going to impact and how it is going to add, uh, ad adding more uh, uh, danger to the disasters. If you look at the precipitation patterns and future projections, there is a 10 to 20 percent increase is projected in, in, uh, in precipitation value in, across the country. There are regional and uh, local uh, variations which can be worked out and has been worked out locally. But there are uh, these, what they say is that we are going to have more rainfall, more intense rainfall in future. So whatever designing criteria in terms of flood management, if I would say, uh, we are we have already designed suppose we have to design we have designed our uh, rainwater uh, so, uh, hydrological structure like stormwater drains these drains are designed for the capacity of once in five year return period and these are the f these are made for long term uses but with the climate change these intensities are going to change so once in five year event suppose it was 20 millimeter uh, uh, per our rainfall uh, design criteria, then due to climate change, there is a certain increase of 30%. So whatever we have designed for, this is not sufficient in, in coming 20, 30 years. And these infrastructure has been developed for longer period of time. So what needs to be done? We have to look, off, look after not just the structural measures, but we also look for the adaptation in, and improve our mitigation strategies. And we have to add the climatic variability in our designing structure while we are uh, creating our infrastructure for any kind of disaster management. Uh, I, this, I was just referring to uh, uh, hydrological disasters. So this has already been presented to you. I will not reiterate it. So if you look at the projected changes in climate over India, it's simply that we are going to have more number of rainy days. Uh, the peaks are going to increase. There are sea level rise, which is estimated for two millimeter per year over North Indian Ocean region and four millimeter per year over the Bay of Bengal. Uh, uh, Professor Murthy has already presented based on his assessment. Uh, there is a variation 0 0.3 to 0 0.4 millimeter uh, per year there is increase. Uh, we have also seen the increase of 15 to 20 percent in storm surges uh, with 100 year return level frequency. So when you look at the storm surges because of the cyclonic activity, uh, Arabian Sea is fa uh, uh, what we have witnessed are seeing the increase in intensity of uh, cyclones and uh, cyclonic disturbances as compared to Bay of Bengal. We have done, uh, we have used the uh, 100 year data of uh, cyclone activity disturbances, depression, deep depression, severe cyclonic activities in way of Bengal. We haven't seen any uh, trend, uh, significant trend uh, uh, in Bay of Bengal, which means the events are going to be same. But it is witnessed that the intensity has gone up. So that area, that means we are going to have more intense cyclonic activities in Bay of Bengal. And because of the uh, topographic impact also and the orographic feature. A rapid warming of uh, uh, sea, uh, our surrounding seas are happening. It's a global phenomena. It is going to impact the cyclonic activities as well. Also, the uh, health of marine uh, ecology and marine, uh, marine ecosystem. So if you look at the floods, the biggest, severest natural disaster we face every year. And the, uh, no matter how very well prepared we are, these events are not going to anywhere. With the current 
projection, present situations, the flood will be there. You change the date and the picture will remain the same. Any part of the country, uh, every uh, major or big cities uh, are facing the issue. When we talk about the urban flood particularly, it is classified as a man-made disasters. It's a, it's a man-made uh, thing and, uh, and we need to do a lot of things to manage urban floods. If you look at the magnitude of impact in terms of loss of lives and uh, economic losses, uh, these are the data collected from CWC and reported by, uh, uh, our, uh, reported in a journal uh, that if you look, compare to 65 years of data from starting from 52 to 2018, there is no single year where we haven't received, uh, we haven't witnessed a large scale flooding event. It ha uh, we have uh, uh, mortality, over one lakh people have been uh, already been uh, dead because of uh, floods, 258, uh, 58 million hectares of crops uh, were damaged, over eight crore houses were raised during this period of time. So we are, and the 4.69 trillion rupees uh, loss of economic damage we have already faced. So these are the uh, uh, consequences of flood we are facing. Alone India, uh, in, sorry. So if we compare the data from 2018 and 2016 in terms of damages, uh, the estimated damage uh, is 2.6 uh, times uh, greater than uh, the, two, the previous year uh, uh, damage. And also we, we have to look at the coming a disaster which in terms of coastal flooding uh, which has uh, increased significantly. All coastal areas in our country are facing the issue of coastal floods and along with the coastal uh, and uh, coastal erosion. And it is estimated that uh, it has increased six times uh, uh, what was estimated previously. So we will look at the status of our uh, preparedness as when we compare disaster, the world, uh, the status, not just India, but globally, we are unprepared. We don't have resources, much resources. We don't have adaptive capacity. We don't have resilience, enough resilience power or in resilience majors. Uh, we don't even have uh, uh, data to study these impacts, how it is going to change in future, what is the current situation. So these, uh, these are uh, challenges which are facing. If you estimate like 200 more nations investing $7 billion in urban development, which is not secure, uh, each year 700 to 900 events cause econo economic losses in billions with large tolls in mortality and morbidity globally. Uh, there is a traditional uh, response to these kind of disasters when we look at the historical perspective. Our uh, our response to these disasters, especially floods, or any kind of disasters, has been post-disaster relief and recovery. The entire focus were initially were there to provide relief and recovery, and uh, that was and there was no focus on preparedness, early preparedness. So there is a paradigm shift happens because of the three events, disastrous events we have faced in in uh, previous decade. First one was 1999 uh, Bhuj earthquake, where lakhs of people have been affected, uh, millions of uh, uh, damage, millions of uh, ec uh, rupees of economic damage happens. Second event was 2000, uh, 20, uh, 2001, uh, Gujarat Paradeep uh, uh, super cyclonic events, where 10,000 people have lost their lives. And the uh, economic damage was immense. Third, event was uh, 2005 uh, uh, Gujarat uh, flood, Surat flood, and, and the Mumbai flood. So these were the three triggering points happen when the government of India is in it, we have to do something about that. And they come up with the solution that we have to uh, change our way how we are managing our disaster. We have to be proactive and we have to focus on prevention and risk assessment because understanding risk in term for the disaster management is 
important. Without understanding the risk, you cannot plan your activity. So they, then there was a paradigm shift happens. Um, just to give, and because of these uh, interventions, 2005, finally government has come up with the National Disaster Management Act. And in that act, provisioned for the constitution of uh, authority at national level, which is National Disaster Management Authority. At state level, we have State Disaster Management Authority. Going down, we have district level, District Management Authority, District Disaster Management Authority, and also at the village level, village uh, body, which is working on disaster management at community level. So there is so much work which has already been done. We are in the process, and we are working to, in, uh, working to improve our uh, activities in terms of how well we can manage our disaster because disaster can only be managed it cannot be prevented so disaster that's why we call it disaster risk reduction we cannot call it risk uh, eliminations we cannot eliminate it we can have to adapt it we have to make ways how we can best uh, uh, manage it and save our lives and our property so as I said how uh, to make any plan, we have to understand the risk uh, because understanding risk is fundamental for any kind of planning. As we know, the risk is a function of hazards, exposure of hazards, vulnerability, and our adaptive capacity. If we know these four things, we would be able to do risk assessment. And based on our risk assessment, we would be able to uh, make our preparedness and response plans accordingly. So. A simple strategy, what we follow for risk assessment uh, for, as for the goal of having disaster resilience, first of all, we have to have a hazard database information, which are location specific, which, uh, so we have to prepare the inventory of disasters or hazards, uh, uh, their vulnerability at social, at social economical, uh, uh, environmental uh, level, uh, then we have to have a, uh, a, a detailed vulnerability assessment done. Based on that, we can able to do our risk assessment. Further, the risk can be classified in two categories, acceptable risk and unacceptable risk. Right. So we have to categorize to prioritize our interventions because the unacceptable risks are those risks which, which have, if we do uh, uh, action and inaction, the cost of action and inaction based on that we can classify it. So if the, there is a net benefit, then we can go for uh, those, uh, 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 th we can categorize as acceptable risk, but beyond that if the cost of action, uh, cost of action is less than the cost of inaction, then uh, we have to trade off somewhere. Because if I take the example of storm water management system, you cannot design your storm water rainfall, uh, storm water management system for once in a hundred year event. It's not economically viable and it's not feasible also because it will take half of your city space. You need a space for constructing these kind of things. So we have to trade off where we can, uh, uh, what, was the, what is our acceptable level of risk? So that has to be designed for those, uh, for the events which are happening on regular basis. So any city you go, where there is no, no such issue, there is no uh, like frequent flooding issue, major issues, those cities have designed their storm water drains once in a five year or once in a 10 year event. If you go to Mumbai, Mumbai has designed their uh, capacity once in the 50 years rainfall events. Because Mumbai faces a lot of uh, uh, flood every year and economic damages, if you look at the action in, uh, cost of action in action is huge. So they have to invest in, in managing and invest more on stormwater management system. So have they, been, they have increased uh, their uh, capacity from 25 millimeter per hour, which was designed previously. And now they have, they have started designing their stormwater drain system for once in a uh, 50 millimeter per hour uh, uh, intensity of rainfall, which is just double. After that only we won't be able to handle the situation of 2005 because the intensity of rainfall was 280 millimeter per hour. So you cannot you design your intervention for that kind of events. You are not prepared for that. And where then 
on that front then we come to the this part of resilience how we can be resilient without having so much of uh, uh, in investments and these are the four pillars which are needed to look after preventions in terms uh, with the mitigation and adaptation options uh, preparedness response relief and recovery so these four uh, pillar of disaster management which take into account and to which if that can be implemented uh, correctly will provide a, a, a significant resilience uh, or acceptable resilience level for disaster so if we talk about the preparedness part of it uh, there are ways of doing it we have to do a flood plain zoning uh, vulnerability analysis flood risk mapping mitigation and adaptation plans for uh, flood protection there are so much activities you can do i will not get, get into the details of each of the interventions climatological weather and inundation forecast and early warning for the season support system the last part uh, is has been discussed in this forum uh, quite regressively uh, we we have seen how uh, modeling tools have been used for designing interventions for early warning system moes has presented yesterday uh, their model for i flows for which is developed for chennai uh, mumbai and how they are helping uh, to for the response part of it because if you have the prior information that this is going to happen you can plan our intervention and we can plan uh, evacuation and other other planning just to give you an example how this is helping in reducing the mortality in 2001 paradip uh, 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 cyclone uh, i have mentioned that uh, the casualty was 10000 10000 people have died because of that uh, uh, particular cyclone because we caught off guard we haven't had the information and where this is going to hit what how uh, what would be the wind velocity and where we can uh, provide shelters and other things to the people and proper evacuation can be planned so there was no information we are put we have put the models after learning from those mistakes we have put up the systems in place uh, there are in imds inquiries which is continuously monitoring and through modeling approach now we are able to predict uh, 15 days from the event that some depression is uh, happening in that particular area and it and we are accurately uh, uh, able to predict the path and where it is going to hit with certain uh, obviously there is uh, certain 6 uh, km or 36 km difference of in the modeling uncertainty because of that we are uh, last year in 2020 three same similar cyclone three cyclones hit uh, paradip coast and the casualty was only 36 so that is the that is the uh, benefit of having these system so bringing 10000 deaths down to 36 it's a significant impact we would uh, we have achieved but it should be zero i would say uh, there sh there should no life which should be wasted because of these kind of disasters so if you look at the how we do this Uh, uh, assessment there are supportive technologies and tools available which has been discussed we can use the gis and remote sensing technology hydrological hydrodynamic models climate models these are used for longer time projections ict tools artificial intelligence and machine learning which can be used uh, for preparedness purpose these are some of the modeling uh, software which uh, has been used which was shown in this uh, in the discussion uh, hydrological models which are available which can be used uh, with the sources uh, which are available some are uh, freely available some are the licensed version which you can use for your uh, risk assessment a mic by dhi advanced circulation model which is used for uh, storm surge and cyclone uh, inundation uh, uh, surface model surface modeling system by aquavio storm water management system model for uh, collection system hecra secms these are the models available for hydrological assessment we have weather forecast uh, from wrf models which is done by ncmr wf and imd gfs is a global forecast system Uh, european climate uh, uh, european center which provides medium and weather forecast which is very good which is giving a very good forecast for uh, southern uh, uh, india especially for chennai and uh, and that region 
We have also satellite products which can be used for uh, weather forecasting, real-time automatic weather stations. The network are increasing. We, initially, we used to have 50 odd numbers. Now the numbers have increased to 3,000 and it is keep on increasing. So more number of observations because models are depend on the data. More accurate the data, more uh, accurate would be your forecast and results. Doppler radars, which are very effective in predicting real-time uh, weather forecast, and very accurately they give information. And for development of uh, these kind of tools and making it automated, for early warning, you can have, uh, uh, there is a support from IT sector, which is server automation, web SQL, and this kind of capacity building required. And it is readily available uh, in, 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 uh, in our country, which can be utilized for better uh, preparedness and response. The input data for these models, where we lack, is the data. We, uh, because any hydrological models need high resolution, accurate digital elevation models. The best uh, uh, resolution which is available for through the Indian satellite is Cartosat, which is available at 10 meter, which is a photogrammetric image, and that is best available sources. But we can generate uh, our data sets. Now we have UAVs, we have LiDAR data uh, facilities. So having a topographic information for, uh, uh, for flood assessment or for any kind of planning, urban planning or uh, designing intervention, you have to have these data sets and that can be created. Uh, river cross section you need, uh, river discharge, observations, forecast, water level. So all these information is available and can be utilized and can be used in models to predict short term or early warning system where the response can be taken up. Obviously for long term measures, we have a climate model which gives you long term projections how the current situation is going to change in future. And we can plan our activities. Of response mode for flood plain management, we can have a structural measures which include dams, divergent channels, storage structures, levees, storm water drainings, embankments, channel improvements, etc. These are structural measures where we do put our civil structures in place. Uh, I am not very um, uh, uh, supportive of uh, uh, such uh, structural measures. Uh, wherever possible, we have to go for non-structural measures, uh, which is more effective. Uh, and which is sustainable uh, and it restore environment also which includes land use planning, uh, flood plain zoning, mainstreaming, DRR in all our developmental activities which eventually uh, result in providing resilience. Uh, policy and regulation should be in place. There are so many policies. We have a coastal uh, regulation zone. We have a, a, a river zonation regulation zone. Unfortunately, only three states has enacted on uh, river uh, regulation uh, zone. Recently, Kerala has uh, adopted that act, enacted that act. Uh, we have to provide incentive and compensation and insurance policies for who is who are affected, uh, affected by these uh, uh, measures, these uh, uh, disasters. Awareness and capacity building is must. Uh, we have to aware our people, our civil society, our students, our kids about the impending dangers uh, this disaster may bring in and also the emergency response plans which has their own merits when there is a uh, event happens how we are going to uh, 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 provide relief and recovery so every disaster district disaster management authority have their emergency action plans and in place and the, the mock drills and exercise they carry on on regular basis so for toward uh, disaster religion society we have to improve public awareness as i have said improve emergency management improve resilience and develop uh, capacity, improve all aspects of data management and data creation and data storage, uh, formation of centers of excellence which were able to translate that information in meaningful way which can be communicated effectively to the end users. Improve hazard characterizations and models and maps which can be used for future uh, planning, uh, reduce all vulnerabilities and manage our risk and also to, we have to improve our environmental vulnerability and risk assessments. So with this, uh, I would end my presentation here and just, well, there is no planet B and whatever we do, it will come to as 
professor was saying it's a karma with whatever we are uh, doing going to do with the nature it's ultimately coming to us so thank you for your attention and uh, if there is any question i would happy to answer thank you thank you so much sir for your uh, insights on disaster and uh, your strategies on disaster risk reduction